Even after the president's press conference today, which sent the averages soaring by short squeeze into the close, we have to be aware that the coronavirus is still in control of this market. And if we see a bunch of new cases over the weekend, the averages will give up many of this gain, especially the last few percent. What could really change that dynamic? What makes it so it just stays up? Well, if somebody comes up with something that can manage the disease, get people out of the hospital faster, or even ward off the disease one day via vaccine, which brings me to Eli Lilly. Yesterday, they announced a partnership with Abcelera to develop a monoclonal antibody-based therapy for COVID-19. That could be a very big deal if it works. So let's take a closer look with Dave Ricks. Dave is the chairman and CEO of Eli Lilly. Dave, welcome back to Mad Money. Great to be with you, Jim, today. Well, first, thank you so much for, for coming on on such short notice. Dave, can you give us the substance of what could happen here? Because the science seems very complex, but the companies that are involved, yours and Upseller, seem to be up to it. Well, there are many approaches that are going on across the pharmaceutical industry and partners with biotech and academic researchers. This is one of them. We signed uh, an announcement deal yesterday with Upseller, as you said. Their approach is to take um, antibodies which are the body's own response to a virus like this. And um, they actually isolated antibodies from one of the first survivors, people to recover from coronavirus in the U.S. They screen those antibodies for the ones that could be active against the virus. And now we're partnering to uh, find the very best one, potentially modify it so it's more like a drug, and then scale up production and manufacturing so we can test it in clinical trials and bring it to the marketplace. Well, Dave, let me ask you, there are a lot of uh, people who are saying the reason why this, this thing's a very hard thing to, to beat, and one of them is because there are apparently 294 variants of COVID-19 so far discovered, and that they're all different. They each have their own uh, characteristics, so it's not, it doesn't lend itself to what you're doing. Is this thing too hard to crack? I don't think so. I think uh, th- there will be solutions that, that will make a difference for treating patients, um, of course, there are separate approaches to vaccinate, which will take more time because we're, you need to test those in healthy people. But um, it, may, it may take more than one medicine um, to help people recover if they, for the sickest that get the, the disease. But um, we're starting this because we believe it can work. And by starting with the, the very uh, material that helps someone survive, uh, we think it's a good starting place to find an antibody uh, or a cocktail of antibodies that could be given to patients when they do become sick. Um, And one thing I want to mention as well, Jim, is the speed at which this is unfolding is unprecedented in our industry. Literally, uh, Absolera started this work 11 days ago. Uh, We signed the deal today. We hope to be in a clinical trial this summer. Well, that, that is extraordinary. I mean, this would be a, a couple-year project just to get there, typically. Now, Len Schleifer is a friend of the show, uh, Edward Generon. He's talking about being able to produce 200,000 preventative doses per month starting at the end of summer. Uh, what do you think you could produce? Yeah, we would be in a similar range. Um, I'm not so worried uh, at this point about the capacity to produce uh, doses. Again, this medicine, and some, it's a similar approach to Regeneron, would be first be used in those that are in uh, intensive care units and hospitals. And those numbers hopefully would not rise uh, very much above that level you just described. Um, for most people, um, they won't need to go to the hospital, but eventually these kind of treatments, these antibodies should be given as a preventative to those that are most at risk, for instance, nursing home patients and others with complicating factors like diabetes and hypertension. Hey, Dave, you're a very common sensible guy, and you're probably, uh, I often say to doctors, the guy who's most in touch with America as a CEO in the pharmaceutical industry. This thing's a little scary to everybody. And maybe you can just describe what you, a medical person, are doing to keep your people who work at Eli Lilly as safe as possible. Because, you know, Dave, I've never seen Americans as scared as they are right now. Yeah, and I think people should be uh, concerned, but not uh, frightened. Um, this is a highly transmissible, uh, transmissible virus, but most people who get it do not get very sick. Um, the young in particular don't seem to be affected, and that's very reassuring. But 8 out of 10 who, get, who are confirmed with the virus in other countries, we know, um, have not gotten severely ill. Uh, so I think that should be reassuring. That said, we need to protect the healthcare system and those that are at risk. And as a result, we've approached this problem by really prioritizing two things. First, the safety of our employees, and then secondly, keeping our employees who have to be coming to work to make medicine, which uh, is, a, is a critical responsibility we have, 
uh, keep them able to come to the office. So we're now in a full work from home uh, scenario uh, at Lilly uh, for everyone except those that need to come and make the medicines and keep critical laboratory experiments moving. Uh, People should avoid, uh, I think, uh, convening in, in large groups. And we should practice those common sense CDC measures like washing our hands, social distancing, uh, coughing into our arm, et cetera, uh, just to avoid the spread of the disease. By doing all this, we can flatten the curve, quote unquote, and uh, preserve the healthcare resources and protect those most at risk. And I think that's everyone's responsibility and a special one for us because we make medicines for people with diabetes and we know they're a high risk group. We cannot let them down by having a shortage. And the good news is we don't. We've uh, confirmed uh, last week, even that we have uh, a broad supply of all our medicines, we want to keep it that way. Well, that, that's what I need to know, David. You and I have spoken off camera sometimes. You know, I'm the spokesperson for the American Migraine Foundation. I now, this week, for the first time, got a notice, which is one of my drugs can't be made because it's got Chinese mm-hmm. ingredients and it can't be delivered right now in time. Uh, how do we preserve this? This is not right, Dave. Yeah, that's a difficult situation. Uh, of course, most of the medicines that branded companies like mine, you know, innovative pharmaceutical companies, our supply chains don't rely on China. And for Lily, none of our products come from China or rely on product uh, inputs that come from China. Uh, that's why we were able to confirm uh, for patients who use Lily medicines, they can rely on that supply. And there's no need to stockpile um, or do anything uh, different. Uh, but a lot of uh, generic medications do rely on um, ingredients from around the world, including from China. Uh, I've seen the list. It's about uh, 20 or 30 medicines. It's available at the FDA website. Um, so it's a pretty small number still, but we'll have to track that. I, I think the recommendation is to talk to your doctor about other alternatives, uh, because there are alternatives in many medication classes that uh, could be used instead and are, are still widely available. Well, look, Dave, I want to thank you for coming on short notice. Thank you for what you're doing to help conquer this terrible disease. That's David Ricks. He's Eli Lilly, chairman and CEO. And what an amazing executive. What he's done for shareholders is incredible, too. Thank you for doing what you're doing. Great to speak to you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Take care. That's David Ricks, Eli Lilly. Look, we're not talking stocks right now. Uh, uh, He's quite a guy. Uh, Done some uh, behind the scenes. It's as good as what you just heard. Everybody's back uh, at the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at CNBC.com or give us a call at 1 800 743 CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.